In this video, we are going to discuss how to make a Pareto chart in Excel. So a Pareto chart is a tool that you can use to identify which problems you want to solve first. So it's usually part of a project management uh, toolkit. And the idea is that if you have several instances of a problem, which of these problems must you prioritize? Now, it may be a bit of a common sense or practical to simply sort your data, right? Like if I have here different problems and then different instances like high rates, uh, 11. So just to give you context, this looks like a data for a hotel. So late room service, eight instances, long wait in the elevator, nine instances. The instances here pertain to the number of, let's say, customers who complained or the number of instances that such problem was reported. Now, practically, your solution would be to simply sort your data from largest to smallest and then just solve the problems from top to bottom. Now, the Pareto principle tries to identify which of these should be prioritized, meaning which of these are the vital few. Because one question is that, until when should you consider something as a priority? Like here, it's obvious that long wait for the receptionist is your priority, but if you want to solve more than that, until when should you solve? Which one should you prioritize? So the Pareto principle helps us with that, and that is by using what they call the 80-20 rule, wherein 80% of the effects can be solved by identifying the top 20% of the causes. Now, we're not really going to discuss the Pareto principle. It's more of how to do it in Excel. Now, the first thing in order to do a Pareto chart in Excel is that first you must sort your data from largest to smallest. And then afterwards, you need to add two more columns to your data. First is the cumulative total. And then next is the cumulative percentage. Now, the cumulative total is the total number of instances increasing from the highest number until the last instance. So the first cumulative total will be the same as the highest number here. And then the succeeding rows would be the total of the previous cumulative total plus the count of instances for this instance or for this problem or for this row. The next cells would simply be to get all the remaining cumulative totals. So given that we use the formula such that the previous cumulative total plus the instances right now for this problem, when you drag that formula downwards, it will follow that reference of getting the previous total and adding the current row instance. So now you finish the cumulative total. This also tells us that there are 88 instances of the problem being recorded. So just to check, if you want to get the sum of all of these numbers, then you will get 88. So that should be the last number of your cumulative total as well. And finally, the cumulative percentage is the cumulative total for that problem divided by the total number of instances. This will lead us to a percentage. So I have to format it as percentage and then drag all the way down and you would know that you got your cumulative table or your Pareto table correct if your last percentage is 100%. But it doesn't end there. We now have to convert this into a Pareto chart. So first, we have to highlight the column of the problems followed by the instances and then skip the column of the cumulative total by using your control key and highlight the cumulative percentage column. And then we're going to insert a column chart, a 2D column chart. And now we have our 2D column chart. And next, we are then going to convert the cumulative percentage, which in this chart 
is presented with an orange uh, column, we're going to change it into a line chart. And since this is a column composed of percentages, they're all below one. So if you look at the chart right now, the preview, the cumulative percentage line is actually a little low. So we have to put that into a different axis. So we're going to check this one in order to make the cumulative percentage line graph, graph plot itself on another axis. Then click OK. And then we have to change the default of Excel because it doesn't really give us a hundred percent. So we have to change it. So we have to format it and we have to make sure that the maximum is just one or 100%. Remember that one is 100%. So the maximum bound of this axis is one for 100%. Enter. And that would translate into something like this. And we're actually done with our Pareto chart. But to find out which of these problems are supposed to be your priority based on the 80-20 rule, we are going to create a line. So we're going to draw a line from the 80% line. So let's make it thicker so that it's um, easily visible. Let's also make it crooked or dashes. Let's turn it green. So you have to create a line from the 80% from the secondary axis and stop at the point wherein it meets the line graph. Afterwards, you will then create another line. So I just duplicated it. And then I made a perpendicular line going down. And with this, we now identified what should be your priorities? So according to the rule, these values over here, the one on the left of the line, are your top priorities or your 80% while the rest are your not so significant problems. It doesn't mean that because they are not significant that you will not solve them or just simply ignore them. The idea is that those on the left side of the line are what complies to the vital few of the Pareto principle.